Hey guys, Winevitable here, bringing you another guide. This time we're looking at Tyrael. That's right, the Archangel from the Diablo universe. He is a melee warrior in Heroes of the Storm. Quite a bruiser up front in your face. Damage dealer, a lot of fun to play. A top pick in competitive play. And for any of you new players out there, he is a lot of fun. Definitely give him a shot. Try him out. So right now we're in the shop. Checking out his basic abilities here, you have Eldruin's Might. He throws his sword. It's a uh, you know mana 55 cooldown of 12 seconds. It slows enemies by 25% around where he throws it, and then he can teleport teleport to it within a short period of time, causing uh, again to slow enemies by 25%. Useful to engage, chase down a fleeing enemy, and also as an escape. If you are surrounded, you need to jump over a wall or get out of you know the middle of the enemy team. That Q can get you out. That's Eldruin's might. His W righteousness is a shield, a temporary shield to both Tyrael and nearby allies. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. It's, it's 12 seconds as well on the cooldown. You can see uh, 65 on the mana. Uh, you know, very useful uh, with minion in, in lane pushing and also shielding in team fights. Remember, it does, it's uh, to nearby heroes and, and minions, of course. So, you know, when you cast that W, you want to be kind of close to your team or the, you know, whatever you're, if you're pushing a lane close to the minions. Uh, Smite is an area of effect damage ability. You can damage an area and speed up nearby allies. Don't forget that part. The last part is an often overlooked thing and you, that you can speed up uh, nearby allies by a bit. It's a cooldown of 7 seconds with mana of 50. And then his trait. He is uh, one of the two ghost heroes as they are known in, in heroes uh, along with Uther. When he dies, he becomes invulnerable. I believe, I have to double check this, I think that's for 5 seconds. No, it's 3.5. Three and a half seconds, and then you explode, dealing at the beginning 200 damage, and that scales over time. I think that got yeah, so that it doesn't say here, but I'm pretty sure that's 200 damage. And so you'll have about three and a half seconds to get close to somebody on the enemy team, towards the enemy a gate, a tower, anything you can damage, and a lot of times you can actually get a kill with this. Uh, you have to be careful with some heroes, say if they have a dash or a blink like Zeratul, Tychus, uh, a barrel roll with Falstead, something of that nature. Where they can, you you kind of you think you're gonna explode with them in your radius, and then they dash out at the last second. So you kind of want to pick a hero who does not have an escape, say a Nova, uh, even well, Regar has a battle mount, but somebody you know a little bit slower without that dash ability, or maybe somebody who just used their dash and is is very close to death. You can explode and often get a kill with it. It's pretty awesome. We'll try to show that in game a little bit, and then his heroic abilities. He's got two. Judgment is the first one. Uh, 100 mana with an 80 second cooldown. Now you will, it's an initiation spell. So you will charge towards a target at lightning speed, knocking back nearby enemies, not including the one that you've, you know, issued the judgment on. And then the one that you did judge, you damage and stun. This is great for uh, jumping onto a single target. You can also do a wombo combo, say a false dead shock and all, or a nova uh, precision strike on top of this. You can stack abilities, you know, you could do a, a leap with Sonya for the extra stun, something like that, of that nature. It's really awesome. Uh, it, it knocks the other heroes on the enemy team away and gives your team a chance to focus down a single target. If somebody gets out of position, you can judgment them. And then, you know, if your, other, your team's there to follow up, it's oftentimes a kill on the right target. Uh, of course, yeah, so it's a mana is 100 and an 80 second cooldown. The second heroic ability is Sanctification. This is a little bit different. It makes all nearby allied heroes invulnerable. Okay, not Tyrael though. He is still vulnerable, but all other heroes nearby are invulnerable for three seconds. Mana of six seventy-five, and a cooldown of fifty seconds. The one thing you have to remember with this ability is that you, as the caster, are not invulnerable. You can be focused by the enemy team, and this is a lot harder to use than Judgment. It's not necessarily a bad ability, but in you know this is guides particularly for for you know for solo queue for newer players to the game that are not necessarily playing in a, in a coordinated team where sanctification would really shine uh, it definitely takes a lot of coordination to pull something off like this otherwise you're kind of going to run in you're going to use sanctification maybe shield a hero too and you're going to get focused and then you know you really have to kind of have if you're going say run in with squishy heroes and then you can you know, on your side on your team you know say i'm thinking of uh, say uh, an assassin like Gavala or nova somebody uh, that's not doesn't have a lot of HP, uh, and your initiation. You go into the battle if you can shield them, and then the enemy team is forced to focus you, while everybody else on your team dishes out DPS. You know, or maybe you know there's some CC going down, uh, and you can land you know some some kind of a stun on the enemy team. Then sanctification can be really useful, especially if you have a healer there to keep you alive uh, throughout the three seconds. I mean, 
it is useful. It is usable. It's just very hard to use. And I often, I've never really, I've used it once or twice maybe. It's, as I said, you need coordination with your team to use this really well. So for newer players, definitely uh, Judgment's going to be a lot easier to use. And we'll actually go through the talents here. Let's go check out the skins first. You can see the basic skin. He's got his three different shades that you get, you know, as you unlock his levels. And then the master skin is pretty awesome. A lot of people love this. I know I, I bought it before the wipe, and I'll have to uh, probably buy it again. It's uh, really, really awesome looking in all these different shades. And then you have the seraphim material with the the, uh, the wings here. And the, see another great skin with a couple different shades. And then, of course, demonic material. It looks like this guy, he's, uh, he's switched sides. He's joined Diablo in the fight. He's joined the prime evils. He's given up his cause. And uh, another awesome skin you'll see with these great the wings flowing behind him. It's really awesome. Great work here. So the, uh, the last two, the Seraphim and Demonic, of course, you buy. The Master Skin is 10,000 gold once you unlock level 10. And then the Talents. Briefly go through these. Now, this as I'm building Tyrael here, uh, he's, as I said, an Initiator. He's a Bruiser. He's a Damage Dealer. He's a Tank, of course. He starts with you know 1,020 health, just 20 uh, back from, from Arthas. And uh, you know, over time, you know, he scales up pretty well. He's pretty tanky. He's not quite as tanky and sustainable as Arthas, but he does a ton of damage. He attacks faster, and over time, he'll actually out damage Arthas as you as you level up, just just with basic attacks. Uh, he does have you know a ton of abilities to use that can also, if you build them right, can do even more damage. And that's what we're really building here. Remember, this is kind of. I guess you could build Tyrael more of almost like shielding, like your allies building up your shield and things like that and using sanctification. But this is more of a damage, picking off heroes, initiating the fight, getting kills, kind of forcing the the fight and, and uh, carrying, you know, all, doing a lot of the damage and getting kills, kind of carrying the fight and, and choosing who to go after, who to kill is the idea behind this. Um, and as I'm going to go through these talents this time, I'm actually going to talk about what talents you can take if you're talent gated. And then which ones you ultimately want to go for. For example, on tier one, right here, level one, start of the game, I will take Purge Yule for that extra 30% smite damage to heroes. And I'll use smite in lane on the heroes. Tyrael's a great laning champion. You know, he's not, not necessarily the best, not the best lane clear compared to, say, a Tassadar, but he does a ton of damage and he's got a ton of health and he has an escape. He's hard to gank with that Q. As I said, you can launch it to escape from the, uh, from the battle. So. Taking this, you can really focus the enemy heroes down a bit. You can get in their face, and you can bruise them up. Um, so that's why I'll take this. If you're talent-gated, though, you can definitely take Herodric Reforging here, the Q. That's an extra 30% as well, but instead, it's on to your Q when you throw the Q. Now, a lot of times in the laning phase with the Q, as you'll see when we get in-game, I'll be using the Herodric Reforging to escape from the battle. So this isn't necessarily um, going to be as useful throughout the game as Purge Evil is. But with Tyrael, I'm not really trying to die all that much. You will die, you know, because you are initiating a fight. You're going to be in the front line. You know, you will oftentimes get focused. Say if you're with, you know, a heavier, beefier hero like an Arthas, they might choose you instead to focus down. Um, so, you know, you could use this if you're talent gated, but I would stick here with Herodric Reforging. And then once you've unlocked level 3, go for Purge Evil. Level 4, there's a couple different choices here. I would, uh, straight up front, when you're talent gated, definitely amplified healing. Increase regeneration effects and all healing received by 30%. I actually take this in almost every build that I use just to get that extra healing, that extra sustain, you know, uh, over time as I'm in the battle. I, for a long time, did take Retribution here. It's one of the expert talents. Uh, cooldown's lowered by 0.5 seconds for each target hit by a smite. The problem with this is Tyrael, he doesn't exactly have mana problems, but with this talent in particular, you will run through, you can just completely run out of mana so fast um, that it's you're done, dealing a ton of damage. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it, I almost didn't prefer the Amplified Healing for that extra sustain instead. And it's slightly lower DPS because you're not casting as many smites as you would be with Retribution. Um, you can also do Angelic Absorption here, where when you're shielded, you gain 30 health over 3 seconds as enemies attack you. The one problem here is it's over 3 seconds, but, you know, kind of... Play around with either one of these if you want to take the healing route, the Amplified Healing or the Angelic Absorption. He also has a fast attack speed, so Vampiric Assault's not terrible either. And then if you want to go straight DPS, do Retribution. But as I said, you'll usually see me taking Amplified Healing on level 4. Uh, now, Even in Death is a cool one. You can use your abilities before exploding, but they deal no damage. Um, I've never really tried that. Might be fun to play with sometime, just for fun. But uh, yeah, 
Let's go to level 7. All right, uh, battle momentum. I love this. You reduce every attack reduces ability cooldowns by 0.5 seconds. That's right. Even your heroic ability. I was about to say your ultimate, but your heroic ability is reduced. So you can, with this, your judgment's going to come around a lot faster. That cooldown is going to be lowered by a lot. You know, it's, it starts at 80. Every time you attack, it goes down by half a second. You can cut that down by 20 seconds a lot of times, depending on, you know, exactly how much you are attacking. I'm sure you could do faster, but, uh, you know, just generally as an average. Um, so I love taking this for that very reason. It also helps if you want to queue into a battle, and then you attack, and your queue, your Eldruin's Might, your Escape, will be back up. So you can use it to get in, and then use it to get back out with this battle momentum. I've also seen people build the, the shield, as I was saying. That's viable if you want to do that, but remember, we're doing like more of a DPS attack in your face build. Uh, generally, don't take the movement speed. Searing attacks, I guess you could, but I generally save this for assassins. And it, yeah, so the battle momentum is really what I go for here. Um, and if you're pubbing, I guess you could do reciprocate a bit for the damage or increase shield duration. But yeah, as I said, I'm gonna so it's, so far it's gonna be purge evil, then amplified healing, and then battle momentum. Level ten, your heroic ability is going to be judgment to start with. Uh, if you want in a coordinated play, once you've gotten used to the hero, you could try sanctification out with the right team comp and coordination. But really, judgment is almost always going to be your go-to. Going to level 13, for a long time I loved playing around with Burning Rage. It was just it's hilarious, especially like on Haunted Minds. You go in, you throw down a smite on the little skeletons, and then your Burning Rage will just destroy them pretty quickly. Same with Minion Waves. It's great for clearing Minion Waves. But, I mean, he has a lot of great choices here on 13. Cast Aside, however, is, is probably what I take almost every match because it is great CC. It pushes your smite instead of just dealing damage and boosting nearby speed you know, to your allied heroes will actually push enemies outside the target area. And you can use this for one of two purposes. Say you want to knock somebody away and you're escaping, you can use it to push them back. But if you want to keep somebody close to get a kill, you throw the smite down, the, you know, this cast aside, this smite in front of them where they're trying to flee to, and it knocks them back towards you. It pulls them back in. You'll see materials, good materials will use this to a great effect in the, the later stages of the game. And uh, you can just chase people down with this. You use the Q to get close, you use a judgment to get onto them, and then you drop a smite to knock them back into you. And it just makes getting kills on people, it's, it's ridiculous. You can even body block them after you do the cast aside. It's it's insane uh, the kind of crowd control you can get with Tyrael using this ability. Uh, imposing will while you're talent gated isn't terrible because the enemies that attack you while shielded have their attack speed slowed by 50% and their movement speeds slowed. I can't remember if that's by 50% as well or not. That isn't. I've seen Tyrael's use that and as a talent gated choice, it's not terrible. But this cast aside is so awesome that you definitely want to give it a shot. If you for some reason do not need that extra CC. You know, depending on the team comp in a rare situation, you don't need this. You could take Angelic Might for the next, uh, you know, extra damage boost to your next attack after using a Smite, I guess. But almost always going to be taking Cast Aside. Level 16, more great choices here. Um, a lot of the times, it depends on the comp here, but a lot of the times I'll be taking Blood for Blood. Uh, you activate to steal 15% of target enemies' max health, and you, I believe you slow them yeah, for 30% over I think three seconds. So that is pretty useful. It's another way to slow them down, to chase people down, keep them from getting away, get the kill. And it takes 15%. Say they're just out of range, you can cast this if you can't auto attack. And then if they're almost dead, that 15%, boom, they drop. Uh, I've seen Holy Ground used to create a ring. When you throw your Q and you teleport to it, it then prevents you know, a little shield, kind of like this on the ground and enemies can't hear the, enter that area, so it's kind of useful for escaping, blocking movement. You can even use that for crowd control to, to keep enemy heroes from escaping. Um, so that's definitely useful. And even for a long time, I did use Blade of Justice for that. The next three basic attacks deal an extra 75% more damage within five seconds of, you, of teleporting. So those are both useful. And if you wanted to go for a shield build, you could do this. Um, I would try one of these two. You know, Obviously, you're talent gated to have to choose one of the first two. Try Blade of Justice just for that straight damage, or you can try this for the CC. But ultimately, I'm, I'm going to be going with Blood for Blood a lot of the time, unless I need the extra uh, CC here on Holy Ground. Uh, and then level 20. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of debate here, because you know we're taking Judgment, as I've said. A lot of people will love Angel of Justice 
for that you know you increase the cash range by 50 percent reduce cooldown by 30 seconds it's pretty awesome and, it, and i'm sure this would stack really well with uh, battle momentum on seven in that you can cut your cooldowns i mean you ha almost have non-stop judgment like uh, if you think about it it's a cooldown of 80 seconds right so now it's cooldown of 50 seconds you use it you attack i mean say you attack 10 times that's five seconds off i guess hey you know so it's not unlimited judgments all the time but it's going to be insanely fast. Still, Resurgence of the Storm is such a great spell, or great talent rather, that I really can't ever pass it up. Even if I'm ahead in the game, I'm almost always taking Resurgence. Um, you know, you get an angel on your shoulder, as they say. Uh, after five seconds, you respawn from dying every two minutes. You get a free pass. You know, you can make a stupid play. You can be a little reckless. You can push in and do some damage to a keeper. For it. Resurgence is a great, great talent on level 20. You know, Angel Justice, if you're really far ahead, uh, isn't isn't terrible. But I'm almost, you know, I wouldn't take Fury. Uh, I would definitely, almost always, as I've said, take Resurgence here. I guess if you, I've never really used Holy Arena. I, as I say, I don't use Sanctification a whole lot, if ever. Um, but you could, I guess, potentially take this on a level 20. I still feel like Resurgence would probably be a better choice. It's just such a good talent that it's hard to pass up. All right, so that'll do it for the uh, the talents here. Let's go ahead. I think, yeah, we covered most of it. We go into the play mode. I'm going to go ahead, get him suited up, um, and then go ahead and jump in game. I'll do this in two parts. So this is the first part, and then we'll get in and uh, do some gameplay. And I'll put the talent list in the description, of course, for all you guys that want to check that out. All right, guys, see you in game. <laughs> 